Good morning. Merry Christmas. We, uh, oh, that sucked. What do you, how do you do it? You're all, good morning! Nothing? All right, good morning. Merry Christmas. There you go. Thank you. I love this Sunday. We let all of our volunteers off uh, one Sunday a year. No nursery, no children's church, no band, and our families, the Rodriguez's and uh, the Stegalls get up, and, and we get to have a family Christmas. This is my 11th year for my family to do this, and so what a blessing. This won't take long. Uh, my favorite Sundays are holiday Sundays because only the best people come to church today. All the losers stayed at home, and the and ones in the middle are watching on Facebook. Good morning, Merry Christmas. Today I'm going to do my David Letterman top ten of uh, things that I want to share. Somebody's texting me. Okay, it's none of you. That's good. This is my top ten, uh, David Letterman, of the top ten things that you need to know in Christmas 2021. Here's number ten. <clears throat> Christmas is all about hope. Jesus was sent to give us hope, and not hope like past, like hope present. Every time you find yourself in a place with no hope, no hope at work, no hope in your life, no hope in your marriage, you need to look to him because he's the only one that can provide what is authentic and real hope. Number nine, Jesus is the only one that can provide love. We celebrate at Christmas that he brought love. He says that his father is love and that he is love and he shares that love with us. And so again, when you're lacking love, when you don't feel love towards others or don't feel love from others, he's the answer. Number eight, joy. Again, you can try to create, make your own joy. I love I love going skiing, and uh, there was a report about Angel Fire. They like to make their own snow at Angel Fire. They have these big sprinklers, and they spray it. It's kind of like snow, and they said, it's not working. It's not working. Uh, they have to wait until God sends the real stuff, the authentic stuff, before their stuff will work at all, and uh, that is like joy. You can try to create your own joy, but your joy, it doesn't last. It doesn't work. It's just like this pseudo joy. But Jesus, he comes. Those are the things they represent, hope, love, joy. And finally, the fourth one is peace. He is the Prince of Peace. That is what he came to bring. Not peace on earth. Uh, not peace with nation to nation. Peace inside of you. In the middle of the storm, you can be full of peace but it relies on him. Number six is no regrets. This Christmas, I want to remind you to have no regrets. I find that in life, it's not the things I do that I regret. It's the things that I don't do. What has God laid on your heart to do? Do that. What has he shared with you to share? Share that. What are the things that you just hesitate and you look back and you regret that? Be a people that have no regrets or regrets or regrets, however you spell it. Do what's on your heart. If you've got a bucket list and things that are fun, things that you have on your heart to do, he didn't just create us to serve one another. I mean, we're supposed to do that, but if there's something you've just been dying to do, just go do it. Live a fulfilled life, full of love with no regrets. Number five, call them, hug them, go see them. One of the things we regret the most is when we didn't call, we didn't hug, and we didn't go see them. And then they died and we didn't expect it. I remember 2015, I didn't expect that that would be the last Christmas I saw my grandmother. I didn't expect that I wouldn't get to have her that year. I didn't, get to re I didn't expect that I wouldn't get to hug her again, talk to her, or call her, and what I wouldn't give just to have a day back, that I could go do what I didn't do. So whoever's on your heart that you haven't called, haven't hugged, and haven't gone to see, go do that. Number four, it's important this time of year that we remember that there are those around us all the time that have lost people. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a busy season uh, for loss this year in many of our church members. We work with people, we go to church with people that have lost loved ones this year and pray for them. Uh, this is the hardest time to have lost somebody. Number three, I want to remind you that it is so important that you relay tradition. Relay like the race in high school where they hand the baton and the next person gets it. So many times we sit around full of regret, lacking joy, not having love, that we, and we're just like, I wish Grandma was here so we could X, Y, Z. Well, that's what we're supposed to be passing on, is X, Y, and Z. Whatever it was that blessed you, whatever happened in your life, you're supposed to be sharing that with those around. 
with the kids. I know my kids and grandkids get tired of hearing the same old stories and the same thing, but that's what I do is transfer tradition so that it goes from one generation to the next. Number two, choose your family. You'll notice uh, we nearly had a, a good old fight this morning. If Kim had brought, didn't you, where is Kim? Didn't you have an instrument for her this morning? And you left it at home? Okay, that's on you, babe. So there was enough instruments for everybody. We just didn't bring them all. Point is this. We love having our grandkids and our children up here. Choose family. Uh, you can be prim and proper and live your life trying to please the world around, but I just choose family. I'd rather than be up here and doing what we're doing, being a part of what we're doing. Uh, you get to see three generations of families ministering, and that's what it's supposed to look like. Choose family. Don't choose pride. Don't choose self. Don't choose others. Don't choose TikTok. All the guilty people giggled. Choose family. And finally, the number one thing I want to remind you of this Christmas season is the word or the phrase Anno Domini. When we say 2021, it's 2021 AD and Anno Domini is Latin. It means in the year of our Lord, not after death. It means the year that he was born. Everything about what we celebrate is the fact that our Lord came, that we might be saved, that we might have all these these wonderful things. And so I want to remind you every Christmas that we don't worship a baby in a manger. We don't worship a Jesus that hangs on a cross. We don't worship a Jesus that's in a tomb. There's an empty manger, an empty cross, and an empty tomb because we have a warrior. He's alive and he's well. And as we celebrate Christmas today, we're going to celebrate it with the Lord's Supper. Real quick before I lead us into the Lord's Supper. Uh, so, I didn't even think about this earlier, but so Pastor Terry and I get together to plan the, the weekend service. And when he called me this week to plan this weekend service, we started talking about the ideas and what's been done in the past and stuff. And as I heard him talk about it, I just said, okay, you got it under control. You got this. And he says, no, 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 no. He says, I'm not saying I want to do it all. I said, I know, but I want you to do it all. <laughs> <laughs> and, and here's why. So you guys have heard me talk about my mom. And, you know, this is Christmas is her birthday. It would have been her birthday. The first year, I handled it pretty well. And I don't know if it was because y'all were gone, and I knew I had to do two sermons that weekend. So I focused on preaching and, and preparation for two services. This week, it was different for me. It was weird. Uh, the second year just was really weird for me. I didn't. I had a, it was a pretty rough week, and you know, as, as he's talking about tradition this morning, um, and actually right now is where I pay more attention to it, so Saturday night, when was Christmas Day? Saturday, right? So Friday night was the night that we would sing happy birthday to my mom at midnight. The kids at midnight started singing happy birthday, and I was kind of in the other side of the room, so I wasn't in the living room as they started singing. And I purposely waited over there for them to be done. Because to be honest with you, and they, they haven't even heard me talk about this, but to me, I'll be honest with you guys, it almost kind of bothered me. You know, it's like, I don't want to hear this right now. Uh, but hearing Pastor Terry right now talking about tradition, you know, that's a tradition that I grew up with. You know, it's a tradition that I've, I've known all my life. And even though she's not here, it's not a bad tradition to keep. Because, you know, as I think about it now, I've got little grandkids that if they hear us singing this throughout their lives, they're going to question, why do we sing happy birthday to Amma? Who is Amma? And then we get to talk about who she was. Even if it's just once a year, we get to talk about who she was. So, although... It made me feel bad that they sang it the other night. I'm looking at it with a new view. Through Pastor Terry, God just revealed to me that traditions are important whether the person is here or not. Traditions are good. They keep our memories going. And that's kind of what we do when we take communion. You know, it says in uh, 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 1 Corinthians, I believe it's chapter 11, where it talks about Jesus, the Last Supper. And, uh, and Jesus talks about this, and he says, and to me, communion is very serious. It's, it's a very important part of the life of a Christian. And one of the things that it talks about, I think, in the latter 
verses, I think it's verse 30, it says, before you do this, examine your heart. Or as we would say in the second service, check your heart. Check your heart, church. Before you break bread and before you drink of the blood, check your heart. Don't bring judgment upon yourself by doing it on pure. So I want to give you just a few minutes just to bow your heads, close your eyes, do whatever you got to do. But I want to give you some time to examine your heart. Check your heart before we lead into the Last Supper. <laughs>